This is a podcast from the Business Times. It's Wednesday, October 2nd, 2024. Here are news headlines to track going into your day from the Business Times news desk. Starting with international news, Iran said early today that its missile attack on Israel was finished, barring further provocation. While Israel and the U.S. promised to retaliate against Tehran's escalation as fears of a wider war intensified, Washington said it would work with longtime ally Israel to make sure Iran faced severe consequences for Tuesday's attack. The United Nations Security Council scheduled a meeting about the Middle East today, and the European Union called for an immediate ceasefire. In Europe, British Prime Minister Keir Starmer will push for a reset of relations when he meets European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen later today for what Brussels described as a first conversation on issues like trade, security, and youth mobility. Starmer, whose Labour Party won a July election, has been clear that his government won't seek wholesale negotiation of the Brexit deal that took Britain out of the bloc. Now turning to Asia news, the newly elected Japanese prime minister pledged Tuesday night to stick to the vital Japan-U.S. alliance amid growing tension in the region while calling for it to be more equitable. This comes as the new premier tries to boost a slow economy and regain public trust ahead of a national election later this month. Shigeru Ishiba was chosen as head of the ruling Liberal Democratic Party last week a ticket to the top job as his party's coalition controls parliament. He replaced Fumio Kishida, who stepped down earlier Tuesday to pave the way for a fresh leader after scandals dogged his government. Staying with Asia, India does not share the vision for an Asian NATO, called for by Japan's new prime minister Shigeru Ishiba, according to Indian Foreign Minister Subramanyam J. Shankar. Mr. Jay Shankar told an event at Washington's Carnegie Endowment for International Peace that unlike Japan, India had never been a treaty ally of another country. Further stating that, we don't have that kind of strategic architecture in mind, when asked about Mr. Ishiba's call. And in Singapore news, individuals affected by cyberbullying, deepfakes, and non-consensual sharing of intimate images can seek faster recourse through a government agency that will be set up to help victims of online harm. Announced by Prime Minister Lawrence Wong on October 1st, the agency will be a one-stop center for victims, acting on their behalf to deal with perpetrators and online service providers, such as social media platforms, and to enforce the swift removal of harmful content. To do this, the agency will be empowered by a new law to improve protection for victims, expected to be introduced in 2025. Turning to equities, the business time stocks to watch today include OE. An OUE subsidiary will issue $150 million green notes with a fixed interest rate of 4% to mature in 2029. The notes, which are expected to be issued on October 8th, will be offered at an issue price of 100% of their principal amount and will pay interest semi-annually. Also worth tracking today is Oxley Holdings. The property player will divest its 30% stake in a to-be-built Malaysia luxury hotel and expects significant cash flow improvements from the sale. For more business news and market updates throughout your day, visit bt.sg. This is a podcast by The Business Times. Find more BT podcasts at businesstimes.com.sg podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts.